Hello, and welcome to this year's end of season review and awards. First off, I hope that you're all really well. It's really sad that we're unable to celebrate properly and in person this year. But we thought we'd try and adapt by doing this video version and getting dressed up anyway. We know that this season has been cut short, but it has been jam packed full of activity on and off the court. So before I hand you over to Chris Davies, who will be announcing the winners of the awards, let's check out some of this season's highlights. What a game, eh? What a match! What sport! What heroism! Well, good evening, everyone, and um, I hope you can hear me uh, to begin with, and I hope that wherever you are, you are both sitting comfortably, um, and indeed, even more importantly, that you are safe and sound. Now, it's a very special welcome to you, obviously, to what is supposed to be our annual awards dinner. It is still our annual awards for the 2019-2020 season, and it is, of course, the second one that we are running in conjunction in association. Um, with Advanta Wealth and we're looking forward to hearing from their CEO Craig Webster um, in just a few minutes from now. Now I have to say that I have made some um, speeches in unusual places and I think to some interesting audiences in the past um, but I've never um, sat in my kitchen in, in my DJ um, and with a visible audience of precisely zero. So we'll have to see how it goes but I suppose if Boris and Liz can get away with it then um, we should just get on with it. Um, but before we do um, progress to the awards, then I do just want to use this opportunity to say a significant and, and heartfelt thank you to uh, the board members of the EFA and indeed to the Charitable Trust for all the work that they're doing to maintain momentum in the development of the game, even during this um, lockdown period as far as playing is concerned. Um, they've been working very hard, but it is difficult at the moment. Um, we've been working with a number of schools to build new courts and so on, but those schools, because of the difficulties at the moment, are um, having to reassess their own um, priorities and financial situations, and it might well be a couple of years before we really get um, back to the situation that we were once in. So a real shame there, but um, still plenty to be done, and thank you again to all those involved. Now, um, I think it's reasonably true to say um, that uh, a number of you have been reasonably bored during the lockdown period, um, and I say that as a recipient of the North Oxford um, WhatsApp communications that have been going round, um, some lively and interesting things going on there, but I think that um, signifies that for a lot of reasons um, we hope a vaccine or cure comes along extremely quickly indeed and gets us all back. Um, doing what we want to do most, um, and that is to actually play the game. So, um, speaking of getting bored, um, I've been told that um, I shouldn't speak for too long uh, this evening, um, and therefore it's probably a good time straight away to get into the first of our awards. So, our first award this evening is for Young Player of the Year. Um, a number of nominees, but in third place we have the wonderful athlete from Shrewsbury School, Izzy Wong. In second place is Etonian Alfie Backhouse. And this year's award goes to habitual winner on court, Hugo Young, 
and he's emerging very quickly as a serious contender at all levels of the game. Many congratulations to you, Hugo. Well done. Hey, thanks everyone. Really appreciate it. This, uh, this whole community is so great and so helpful uh, with, with improving my game. Uh, I want to thank players like, uh, like Ricky and Laurie who have really taken the time to, to give me tips and help me improve. Um, and to everyone who, who I've partnered, particularly Noah has, has really helped me get up to a higher level. But yeah, everyone, everyone in this community is so, so lovely. And I just can't wait to, to get back on court whenever, whenever that's a possibility. But yeah, thank you. We move on now to coach of the year. In third place, we have Aldenham's Andy Stevenson, open brackets, veteran, close brackets. Well done, Andy. Our runner-up is Ryan Perry, coaching so successfully at Berkhamsted Prep School. Prep schools, you see, best education you can get. But this year's deserved winner is Eton College's coach, George Thomason, whose senior team were the winners of the school's team competition, the Williams Cup. Well done, George. Thank you to all those that voted for me for Coach of the Year. It's an honour and I'm truly delighted. It's such a shame that the Nationals haven't been able to go ahead this year. Fingers crossed that they will do in the near future. Looking forward to seeing you all soon. We move on to our third award now, that is for Team of the Year. And in third place, we have the Old Chomleans. Great to see them back on the map, he says unbiasedly. Second place, we have the always enthusiastic but now increasingly successful on-court Royal Holloway team. Many congratulations to them. Uh, but the team of the year this year can boost and boast a hugely strong squad whenever they turn out. This year they were worthy winners of Divisions 1 and 2 and also the EFA Trophy. Many congratulations to deserved winners, the Old Slopians. Well done. Hi everyone, uh, firstly I hope you and all your loved ones are doing well, um, apologies I've had to fire my camera woman because she was useless so I'm doing this on my own. Um, thank you for all your votes, um, we're very proud to have won Team of the Year, uh, sorry that we didn't get to finish the season properly um, but we're very much looking forward to getting on court next year and having a go at beating you all again, cheers. Now, the final EFA award at this stage of the evening goes to our Player of the Year. And in third place, we have Ricky Holden from the Old Westminsters. In second place, we have the hugely talented Karen Hurd. And finally, I'm delighted to announce that this year's winner is Noel Chomlian. He has enjoyed huge and wonderful success in the major competitions this season, most of all being part of the pair with Ricky Holden to inflict the first defeat in a decade or so on the Dunbar Cooley combo. So well done and congratulations it is to Johnny Ho. Hi everyone, Johnny here. Just wanted to say a quick thanks. Uh, it's such an honor to be nominated for this award and to receive it. I uh, want to say thanks to my partners, uh, competitors, teammates, and everyone in this great community uh, who have made it easier improve and just keep loving this game really looking forward to seeing you all on court soon and hope you're keeping well so we now hand over to craig webster the ceo of Advanta wealth and they are going to present their award for this evening hi i hope you're all well and acclimatizing to these very peculiar times as best as any of us can and while fives might pale into insignificance in what's happening in the world the joy of sport is that it can provide some respite and I'm sure all of you will join me in hoping that we can start playing again soon. We started the Advanta Unsung Hero Award to acknowledge those who have made a real impact to the world of fives but might not have received the plaudits or recognition they truly deserve. Without these people the game would not be in the position it is in today. This year the award goes to two university students who as well as studying for their degree created a fives club from scratch at a university that previously had no tradition of fives, nor indeed any other students who had even played the game. The club has since gained official status from the university and has quickly grown into one of the most buoyant clubs in the fives community. The members are mostly new fives players, often never having heard of the game. 
Through their efforts, the club has been able to send numerous pairs to the EFA competitions, including entering six pairs into the university's tournament, with the award recipients reaching the court finals and knocking out Cambridge 1 along the way. The club has also represented both Mill Hill and Windsor and Eton in the London League and had matches against other universities, including both Oxford and Cambridge. Will Seath, the founder, and Ollie Avery, his first recruit, have done something truly special at Royal Holloway. And now, as they both prepare to graduate this summer, they should be proud of the legacy they leave behind. So it is with great pleasure that I can present them both with the Advance of Wealth Unsung Hero Award. On behalf of both of us, we'd like to thank the uh, Fives community and Advance of Wealth for um, giving us this uh, award for Unsung Hero. Uh, we're both very proud and honoured to be accepting it today. Thank you. The, number, the people we'd like to thank are far too many to count, but we'd really like to thank Gareth for all his continual advice and support, and Mandy from Windsor and Eton for accommodating us on more Tuesday nights than we can count. And obviously we'd like to thank everyone from Holloway who comes down to play fives. It's been a real honour to you know, show you guys how to play fives and building up a community there. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome back to the final award of the evening, which is the EFA's Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, um, there's quite a lot to say about the recipient, um, and I'm very grateful indeed to Simon Wolfries for giving me so much of the information about our recipient this evening, although I've been on court against him um, many times over our long careers. So this evening's Lifetime Achievement Award winner is without doubt one of the very best players to have come from Ipswich School. If we take into account the length of his competitive playing career, he has no equal amongst old Ipswichians. Those who played on court with him can testify that he is either the ideal partner or a threatening opponent. He enjoys not only real strengths in cut and return, but also reliability, consistency, in command in all areas of the court. These virtues have been the basis of his successes on court over six decades. We are, of course, talking about Peter Boughton. Peter first played for the Old Ipswichians 52 years ago. He's represented the club in more matches than anyone else. The huge majority of his appearances have been at first pair, and to his huge credit, he is still a regular in the old Ipswichian team, regularly travelling down from Ipswich to London to get involved. Peter's also enjoyed many tournament successes, which include winning the Kinnaird Pepper Pot Trophy on four occasions, all of which were with John Cordell. And he also won the Mixed Tournament four times with Karen Runnicles. He's won the Graves Cup at Ipswich five times, and in testament to his remarkable competitive longevity, he has won the Veterans Trophy three times, the over 50s and the over 60s, two times each. Successes on court are a sure source of satisfaction for all players of the game, but it's clear that Peter takes most pride from his contribution to the development of the game, and especially at Ipswich School. As school bursar, he was ideally placed to project manage the building of the third court in the 1990s. This was a significant factor in the rekindling of a vibrant fives community at Ipswich, and he became master in charge of the sport in 2007. The consequential success of this move was immediately evident when in 2012 an Ipswich school pair won the under-15 National Schoolboys Championships, Ipswich's first win at any age group in these tournaments, and Peter was voted Coach of the Year at that year's EFA Awards. Now, Fives at Ipswich continued to grow in popularity with both boys and girls, such that in 2018, 70 pairs were entered at the Nationals, which is an astonishing achievement for a school with only three courts. Now, Peter would be the first to acknowledge the role of Tony Stubbs in helping to achieve this success, but there's no doubt that he has been the driving force and inspiration behind the growth of Ipswich Fives. Self-evidently, boys and girls only return to the courts in the numbers that they do when they're really enjoying all that is on offer. And Peter's ability to deliver the whole package of enjoyment and success marks him out as an outstanding coach. 
As you know, Peter remains a wonderfully active player, and in addition he is president of the Old Ipswichian Fives Club, he is organiser of the Graves Cup, and he's very much master in charge at Ipswich. And he's even found time in recent seasons to make regular visits to the city of Norwich School to run sessions and keep the game alive at this further outpost. Now, any Ipswichian going to Norwich for any reason at any time is, I think, worthy of an award. But tonight, Peter Boughton is very clearly the richly deserving recipient of the 2020 EFA Lifetime Achievement Award. So well done and congratulations, Peter, and thank you for all you do. Thank you so much for honouring me with the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award. It's um, absolutely tremendous to be thought of in those terms. I'm delighted and flattered. Uh, I'm a bit surprised, really. I don't feel as though I've done that much, and certainly not compared with a lot of others. Um, I haven't ever started a fives club or spent years on the committee like Mike Fenn, for instance. Uh, I haven't even come up with a, a name for a new position on the court like Nigel Cox, who, when watching a prominent old Edwardian years ago, described his position in the back court as um, awaiting the onset of a rectal prolapse. I suppose the, uh, the thing I have done is, is been around a long time. Um, I think it was Howard Wiseman a couple of years ago who uh, said to me, uh, I feel as though you've been around forever. Uh, I don't think he was referring to the way I was playing on court and not moving at the time, but you never know. Um, so certainly I have been around a long time. Um, and in fact, working it out, it, uh, 58 years ago that I was dragged out of the classroom um, by a teacher at Ipswich School and told that I'm going to learn Eton Fives. Uh, dear old Brian Lloyd, I, uh, I owe him a lot. Um, it's been good to be able to put a bit back and have the chance to coach Fives at Ipswich. Um, had to give up the proper job, of course, to, uh, to do it, but um, it's been fantastic. Uh, and very satisfying. Um, I, um, over 58 years, I've seen a huge number of changes in the game and all for the better. I think it's absolutely brilliant. And uh, those of you who are running and running the game and, and coaching fives do a, a tremendous job. It's brilliant to see it coming on uh, and widening and um, a way to go on that, but um, certainly heading in the right direction, which is brilliant. Um, I, um, I've had the opportunity over the years to play with and against uh, some great players um, and um, given a lot of pleasure to a lot of people by letting them beat me, not always. Um, and um, over that time, I've had a huge amount of fun and um, had the privilege of meeting uh, a lot of really lovely people and uh, I'm very grateful to the game for that. Um, so I think that, um, just repeat, I'm extremely grateful for the award. Thank you very much. Uh, and I think that um, just finish with a, a toast to all players and, and particularly our, our players who are on the front line in the fight against the COVID virus. And um, here's to fives and a healthy future. Cheers. So to draw this video to a close, we just wanted to say another huge congratulations to all the award nominees and the worthy winners. To you guys at home, thank you very much for watching and we hope that you enjoyed this video version of the EFA Awards. We hope that you continue to stay safe and stay healthy and I cannot wait to see all of you guys again on court soon. Goodbye. <laughs>